The purpose of this video is to get some basic vocabulary for infinite sequences and then look at kind of a simple running example to illustrate each of these things. So first, what's an infinite sequence? A typical notation for it is like this. So I have braces and then an A with a subscript of N. And I could add to this that I want you to plug in N equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. And what this is, is an infinite list of numbers that's all in order, starting from n equals 1 and so on. So just to illustrate what that looks like, let's, let's go to the second item on the expanded form of a sequence. That's the form where you just write out every single one of these terms. So that would be a1, a2, a3, a4, and so on and so on forever. Okay, so for example, an infinite sequence in expanded form might look like this. And typically, you only need to include three terms in order to recognize whatever the pattern is, but you're certainly welcome to include more than three if it helps. What about the explicit formula for an infinite sequence? That's the case where you can actually use a function to generate the ANs. So each AN is expressible as some function f evaluated at some number n, where n is 1, 2, 3, and so on. I could say that f is defined for all natural numbers, so all n belonging to the set of natural numbers. That just means 1, 2, 3, and so on. And an example of this, I could write inside the braces that my ans are generated by the formula 2n minus 1. So that's the function f of n, 2n minus 1. Um, if you then want to look at this in expanded form, you could sub in n equals 1, n equals 2, and so on. So when I put in n equals 1, I get 2 times 1 minus 1. That's just 1. Put in n equals 2, and I get 2 times 2. That's 4 minus 1, giving me 3. Put in n equals 3, I get 6 minus 1. That's 5. Aha, I recognize the pattern. We're really talking about the same sequence we were talking about in the last example. Finally, we can define a sequence by using a recurrence relation. And that means you define the next term in terms of previous terms in the sequence. So an, written in terms of previous terms in the sequence. But then you also need to define a starting point. So I'm going to say plus a starting point. For example, I could say a sequence is generated by the recurrence relation a n equals a n minus 1, in other words, the previous term, plus 2, together with the starting point a1 equals 1. And from this, you could generate the expanded form for the sequence. So I would start at a1 equals 1, and then to find a2, you just go to the recurrence relation and plug in n equals 2. And when I do that, I get a2 equals a1, so that's 2 minus 1 in the subscript there, a1 plus 2. Well, a1 is just 1, so that's 1 plus 2, in other words, 3. Continuing like this, I could write down a3 by subbing in n equals 3 into the recurrence relation, and I get a2 plus 2, but I just figured out a2, and that's 3, so I have 3 plus 2, and I get 5. And you might see the pattern now, but I'll just go ahead and get the fourth term. You would sub in n equals 4 in the recurrence relation, and I get a3 plus 2, and I already have a3, that's 5, so 5 plus 2, and I get 7, and it looks like we have the exact same sequence we've been working with in every example in this video. a1 is 1 a2 is 3, a3 is 5, a4 is 7, and so on and so on. So we've expressed this simple little sequence, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, the odd numbers, in several different ways. We have the expanded form up here. We have the explicit formula form. We have the recurrence relation form. And it's just three different ways of dressing up the exact same list of numbers.